Well, thanks for watching. Today we're going to talk about setting up subdomain tracking with Google Analytics and we're working with Universal Analytics. Um, this process takes about five minutes. I think the video is going to be a little bit longer, but we just want to explain a few things along the way. Let's jump right in. Um, we're going to talk about first uh, what does subdomain tracking mean and what problem is it going to fix for you. Um, we're going to quickly talk about the code and installation of the code. We're going to talk about setting up the appropriate views filters and exclusions to make your reports accurate and uh, we're going to test. We're going to go through um, full test to make sure that our program is working as it's intended. So let's jump right in to some analytics to see what problem we're solving. So with subdomain tracking, um, what we're trying to fix is a situation where maybe you have a website, um, example.com, and, and maybe you have an e-commerce store as well that's store.example.com. And what happens is out of the box, if you were just to install analytics on both of those, um, they would look like refers of one another. Um, here's an example um, that we have set up. Um, we have a, a site um, that we're going to work with today, and it's webgumption.com. Um, and, and to test this out and to sort of demonstrate it all, what we've also set up is just something called test.webgumption.com. Um, and when we look at traffic reports, as traffic flows back and forth between um, our main site, the www version, and the test.webgumption.com version, um, what we see are um, self-referrals, we call them, but uh, what we're seeing is a uh, test looks like it, it sent traffic. Um, we, for this example, don't want to track um, that as being the traffic source because maybe we drove traffic to that subdomain through an ad or, or otherwise, and we want to make sure that it all kind of gets tracked as the same session. So we're going to make it so that this referral disappears and that the actual source and medium track. Um, second part of what we're going to do, too, is we want to gain visibility of you know how much traffic is that subdomain um, generating compared to the main domain, so um, that we're going to handle as well. Um, so let's uh, let's start with the first step, and that's the code. Um, if you've dealt with this in previous versions of Google Analytics, um, you may remember that you needed to customize your tracking code. What's great about Universal Analytics is that there's no customizations necessary. So you're just going to hop into your Analytics account grab the code, copy it, and paste it after the opening body as you always would. Um, you, of course you want to do that on, you know, if it's the www version of your domain, um, like we have here. Um, and then any subdomains, you want sort of that exact same code um, there. Um, so that part is really easy. Um, the next part is actually also easy. We're just going to jump into the main admin screen and we're going to set up a new view. Um, and all the new view is really going to do is uh, it's going to show us this subdomain traffic and it's going to show the entire domain. So we're going to see uh, we're going to be able to see when we look at page reports, for example, that um, you know www version got this piece of traffic, and then the test.webgumption.com version got this traffic, etc. And we'll show you what that looks like. Um, so what we're going to do is just go to views. Um, we, we like to leave one view always with Google Analytics that's completely unfiltered. Um, so we're going to leave alone sort of our main view, and we're just going to create a new one. And for this example, I'm going to call it just show subdomain because that's all that's all this view is going to do for us is to show the subdomain. So we quickly create the view, and that's pretty painless. Um, we can see the view set up here. Um, the next thing we're going to do is apply the appropriate filter to this view. So um, filters can be used for a number of things in Google Analytics. In this example, what we're just going to make sure um, this filter does is show the host name. So it's going to show the subdomain to the to the um, to the reports. So I'm going to quickly hit new filter. Um, I, I should note that below this video you're going to see a link where we actually have a lot of this documentation if you want to do some cutting and pasting as well. Um, uh, but uh, I'm going to quickly just go through setting up the filter um, probably without explaining too much to keep the video pretty short. So um, what we're going to start with is a, is a custom filter and I'm actually just going to give it a name of uh, show is uh, same as we did before, it's uh, really up to you what you want to call it, but this filter shows the subdomain, so that's what I'm going to call it. Um, and of course it's an advanced filter type under the custom tab. And we're quickly going to, um, for the um, field A to the extract A, we're going to quickly just choose host name. Um, for field B and extract B, I'm going to choose the request URI. And then for the output, all we are going to do is configure it like this. And again, all of this can be cut and paste uh, in the notes below the video. 
and we're going to hit save. So essentially what this filter is going to tell Google Analytics is show the subdomain in my reports. Um, so at the end of the day, what we're going to have our, our uh, just jump into the admin real quick. We're going to have two different views. One which is our original that didn't show the subdomain um, and, and, and the new one that will show the subdomain. Very last thing we need to do to set up, we're almost done, um, is we need to set up what's called a referral exclusion list. And all we're going to do here is tell Google Analytics, you know, even though um, our subdomain looks like a referring domain and that's how you'd normally treat it, we're going to say don't treat it separately, never count this as a referral. So all you really do here is just type in, we're going to type in webgumption.com. Um, you don't need to type in, you don't need the subdomain or the www, this is just to tell Google, treat us all the same. Um, and that is it. So that effectively, what we have now now are two different profiles, one which does not show the subdomain, one which does. And uh, let's jump in and test it and look at what it looks like. So I'm going to jump in first to the profile that says show subdomain. I'm going to go to reporting and the best way to test in our opinion is to just hop into real time. And uh, we're just going to look at the overview screen first. Um, I think it's really important with this stuff to start by clearing cookies. Um, so uh, we just don't want any previous sessions or visits to this website to sort of taint our data. So I'm just going to quickly clear only those cookies so I don't get logged out of anything else. Okay, and let's start as our demonstration. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go side by side and uh, we're going to we're going to go to a certain page on the site, we're going to hop back to real time and basically just analyze how Google is seeing it and processing the data. So let's start with that test.webgumption.com and this was our subdomain site set up with the appropriate code. Um, then we're going to hop into real time and it usually takes a few seconds to catch up here um, and we can see already that the active page is tests.webgumption.com. Now, I quickly want to show you how that's different than our non-filtered view. So this is our show subdomain view. What I'm quickly going to do is jump over to our non-view. This is our all website data view. And you can see how the active page here is just a slash, right? So if I go back, the active page shows the subdomain. So it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's showing the subdomain, which is really important. Um, the next thing we're going to quickly do is we're going to look at the traffic sources. We're the only one on the site right now, and our traffic source is direct because we, we type directly in there. So what I'm going to do next is um, from this page is I'm just going to click this link over to my www version. And what I want to make sure when I do this is that this medium does not change. And so we're just going to give it a few seconds to catch up and we can see, um, you can see the page view over here, um, and we can see that the medium did not change, so that's great, that's exactly what we want. We don't want Google to say, hey, a referral just sent this traffic, um, we're telling it to treat it all the same. Um, and then, of course, when we go to the content report, um, we can see then it, that's the www.webgumption.com. So again, we're seeing this whole active page, the whole active URL. Um, so the, so um, that pretty much concludes our test. That's exactly what we wanted to see. The, the, again, to recap, the two things that we're looking for is that the active page always includes the full URL, so the www or whatever the subdomain is. And then the second thing is, as we go back and forth between the you know, a subdomain and the root and you know, whatever combination it is, we just want to make sure that the traffic source stays what it should be. So it should never say um, referral if it wasn't a referral. If we had done some organic, uh, an organic hit, for example, we'd want to make sure that even though we went back and forth, that didn't change. No. So that's about it. That's all there is to, um, to uh, subdomain tracking. I hope it helps. Um, and use the links below the video if you need more information. Thanks.